On June 4th, NASA made a major announcement on X. Here's the big reveal of Europa Clipper. The spacecraft is out of the box, and processing has started ahead of the journey to Jupiter's moon, Europa. And now, on October 4th, look, it's being wrapped in the fairing of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. NASA's high-profile and critically important mission is about to launch atop SpaceX's mighty workhorse. Let's dive into everything in today's episode. SpaceX is gearing up for one of the most critical and arguably most expensive Falcon Heavy missions to date, NASA's Europa a Clipper mission. This is expected to be one of the most significant space science missions of 2024. The spacecraft, developed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, will travel to Jupiter's moon Europa to study what is believed to be an ocean beneath its icy surface. If successful, this mission could unlock groundbreaking insights about the potential for life beyond Earth. With a total development cost of up to $5 billion, Europa Clipper is one of NASA's most expensive projects. It's also the third most expensive payload ever sent into space. That's why NASA must take every possible measure to protect this invaluable cargo. Originally, the mission was set to launch on October 10, 2024. However, concerns about the weather, particularly Hurricane Milton, which is forecasted to move from the Gulf of Mexico to the east coast of Florida, surely impacting critical areas like Cape Canaveral and Merritt Island, home to NASA's Kennedy Space Center, forced NASA to postpone the launch to ensure the safety of the payload. Launch teams have already moved and secured the spacecraft in SpaceX's hangar at Launch Complex 39A, and the center began hurricane preparation measures as early as this past Sunday. NASA has yet to announce a new official launch date, but it's predicted that the delay will be about a week. Well, we'll have to wait a little longer to see NASA's Europa Clipper probe finally lift off. However, this delay isn't something to worry too much about. While some types of missions have extremely narrow launch windows, requiring very specific timing, Europa Clipper offers more flexibility. SpaceX can launch the mission on any day in October, thanks to the Falcon Heavy's powerful capabilities. In fact, the initial launch window has already been extended from October 30th to November 6th, giving them over a week more. The point is, why is this flexibility possible? Because that's SpaceX. These engineering wizards have found a way to extend the launch window by fully unleashing the power of the Falcon Heavy. Falcon Heavy, with its three Falcon 9 boosters and a total of 27 Merlin engines, generates over 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, equivalent to the power of around 18 Boeing 747s. It's one of the most powerful rockets in the world today, capable of carrying nearly 64 tons of payload into orbit. Normally, the two side boosters of Falcon Heavy would return to Earth and land safely at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station for reuse, while the central core would expend all its fuel. But this time, things are different. All three boosters will be completely expended during the mission. SpaceX will burn through the full power of these three boosters to ensure that the Europa Clipper spacecraft has the energy it needs to begin its long journey. Armando Piloto, NASA's Launch Services Program Manager, revealed that SpaceX has made some hardware upgrades, allowing the rocket to fully utilize all the fuel in its boosters. Now, we won't know the exact modifications SpaceX made, because that's proprietary information, but we can definitely speculate. Since the boosters won't be returning this time, SpaceX might remove the grid fins and landing legs, allowing them to reduce the dry mass. Additionally, to boost performance, data from the rocket's flight will be transmitted through NASA's tracking and Data Relay Satellite System, TDRSS, instead of relying on ground stations. This gives SpaceX more orbital flexibility, as the rocket won't have to fly over specific points on Earth to carry out fuel burns, something that previously limited performance on other missions. That's the hallmark of SpaceX's rapid adaptability and innovation. Excellent. The selection process for the launch vehicle of the Europa Clipper mission is a prime example of the complex intersection between science, engineering, and politics in space exploration. Typically, decisions on NASA's science missions focus on technical capability and cost. But for Europa Clipper, this decision sparked a prolonged and heated political debate. NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, was initially seen as the preferred choice, given its ability to send Europa Clipper directly to Jupiter, shortening the journey to about three years. Alternatives like United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy or SpaceX's Falcon Heavy would require gravity assists, adding several years to the mission timeline. Despite the U.S. Congress mandating the use of the SLS for Europa Clipper and its follow-up lander mission through provisions in multiple multiple years of budget appropriations, the reliance on SLS has faced significant issues. First off, there's a hardware incompatibility between the Europa Clipper spacecraft and the SLS rocket, primarily due to the specific technical characteristics of the SLS, especially its solid rocket boosters. 
Specifically, the SLS uses solid fuel boosters, which are known for generating extreme thrust, but they also come with intense vibrations, leading to short but extremely powerful lateral vibration. This means that the payload, in this case the Europa Clipper spacecraft, would be subjected to intense sideways forces. Compared to liquid-fueled boosters, the vibrations from the solid rocket boosters of the SLS are significantly stronger. This is a critical issue because Europa Clipper is a highly complex spacecraft, packed with delicate scientific instruments, valued at a around $5 billion. In the harsh vibrational environment of the SLS, there's a real risk that some of the spacecraft's components could be damaged or even shattered. To address this issue, NASA was forced to consider redesigning the entire Europa Clipper spacecraft to withstand the high vibration environment of the SLS. This redesign process was estimated to add at least another $1 billion to the project's cost. That's an enormous expense, pushing the mission well beyond its projected budget. NASA isn't swimming in cash. Let's be clear about that. In February 2024, JPL made an announcement that sent shockwaves through the space science and technology community. They had to lay off around 530 employees and 40 contractors. This wasn't a sudden move, but a painful decision made after JPL had exhausted all other cost-cutting measures. Yeah, NASA is not that rich. This decision came as a result of long-standing financial pressure. JPL, like NASA as a whole, has been grappling with the reality of potential budget cuts from the federal government. So no, NASA simply can't afford to throw $3 billion at one launch. Even if they were rich enough to throw $3 billion into a single launch, there simply wouldn't be an SLS rocket available to use. First of all, it's important to understand that SLS is a critical part of NASA's Artemis program, a bold initiative to return humans to the moon and establish a long-term presence there. The first three SLS rockets have already been specifically assigned to Artemis missions. With this schedule, the earliest an SLS could be available for the Europa Clipper mission would be 2025. However, this puts NASA in a tricky spot because the Europa Clipper needs to launch in 2024. SLS is notoriously slow-moving, and there's just no realistic way to speed up production enough to have another SLS ready for Europa in time. That's how the opportunity opened up for SpaceX, and honestly, it was a brilliant decision. You're saving close to $3 billion, and nothing gets disrupted. Europa Clipper is expected to arrive in April 2030. Man, to follow deep space missions like this, you really need a long breath. Personally, I get incredibly excited when these space missions launch. And then five years later, after reaching a different stage of life, I get excited all over again. We're about to find out if life, or the potential for life, exists beneath the icy, desolate surface of Jupiter's moon. Hidden beneath that frozen shell, which has seemingly locked out any contact with the outside, could be an entire world waiting to be discovered. And soon enough, humanity will take another monumental leap toward becoming a multi-planetary species. It's no longer just a dream. It's the next chapter in our journey through the stars. Exciting times are ahead. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.